Help is a powerful thing, said to be the best gift anyone could ever give. As per the famous quote by Magic Johnson, all kids need is a little help, a little hope, and someone who believes in them. For the over 200 children at shelter them, a little help goes a long way. Despite their most of the time sad testimonies, shelter them gives them hope for a better future. Shelter them is a non-governmental organization. It's a local NGO. Uh, which uh, operates in uh, Bugesera district. Our main focus is vulnerable children. So we help vulnerable children uh, to become independent adults. But we can't help children without supporting their families. We empower them to become self-sufficient. We have uh, 214 children. Uh, of course, the program for children is education. We have uh, 98 children in early childhood development education. We have uh, 85 uh, in primary. Uh, we have uh, 29 in secondary and 11 in uh, university. Some of them came from the street, others were abandoned children, others was, were living with uh, poor families, uh, so we help them and uh, our vision is to make sure they become independent adults. My name is Jocelyn Higiro. They call me Butoyi. I am one of the twin sister with this beautiful girl, my uh, Josephine Higiro, and they call her Bukuru. Bukuru. Gakuru. We're ten siblings, uh, six girls and four boys. Uh, my mom is Cesari Sungiza. My daddy Tersis Higiro. Uh, we are family very close. Love each other, but. You know, from looking at my family today, it always go back to our past. So the first genocide against Tutsi, of course, my mom and dad, after finishing their studies, they, um, they fled to Burundi as refugees and they kind of know each other, knew each other before they left. And um, when they met, and they, well, of course, they got married because they had already that special connection. And, but they, with getting married in uh, as a refugee family, it was a struggle. Uh, we um, were born, 10 uh, siblings born in Mushiha. Uh, that's a very small village in Bur uh, Burundi. Um, so looking at in our past, lots of struggles as refugees. Um, you can imagine 10 kids with no uh, jo proper jobs. So let me speak for myself, um, you know, we did struggle, Josephine and I, going to school and sometimes trying to find money for our tuition. It was a struggle. Food every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it was not really our day-to-day -day, uh, opportunity to do so. Um, so I feel like I have been blessed as a uh, Rwandan, now as a Canadian. Um, I live in Canada, have been in Canada since 1997, but um, I always look back and I always appreciate life and I, I'm very grateful of where I am and not forgetting my past, which makes me who I am. My sister Jocelyn talked about our family past, but um, she uh, introduced my mother as Césarie, but people know my mother as Mama Yesu. 
Mama Yesu, why? Because every time we will walk away from the house, she will somewhat manage to see somebody in need and bring them home with us. So we grew up at 10, but really just not 10. It was like 20. 30. I don't know how many people have passed by our living room, but our uh, lunch table, a dinner table, countless of people. And that was a root that was planted in our minds, in our being. And that's what formed Justin and I and many of our siblings to do the same. When we look at somebody, we just don't look, we see them. We see them what they need and we want to help always. So when we left to you know, Rwanda and go to Canada in 97. We just went and car you know, carried on with our studies and everything. But um, it was almost like, are we gonna do something one day? Like we can just be like Monday to Friday, regular people who just forget about the roots. So the opportunity really came about when we came to Rwanda, back to visit the family, mom and all in their siblings 2000, uh, in 2005. Wow. And that's where we saw the opportunity of the little church feeding about 200 kids. So we were really waiting for that opportunity. When we saw, we were like, amen, hallelujah. That's exactly what we need to do. A little root that's already planted and then we're not, we just need to encourage them with our support from Canada by talking to other Canadians, other Rwandans and that's how Shelter Them but Tarure was born. It's a root um, foundation from the early seed from my mother, Mama Yesu and the Rwandans who help their um, families and extended Family. So that's how Shelter Them started and now we're standing here in Igateko and we're looking at all the families we work with, the children, successful stories, those that have a grounded root from a, a pure heart of kindness and compassion from people who experienced poverty, were born in a really, in, like she said, in a camp, um, our house were a grass house, very humble, and now we're at a place where we can help ourselves and others, and that's what we want to do, and also extend it to other Rwandans to share what they have with their own people, and not expect the outsiders to bring it in. <laughs> Abana bari baravuye mu ishuri babashubije kwiga. Noneho batangira no kwita ku mibereho yabo myiza babaha ibyo kurya byose bikenewe ndetse batangira no kuvuzwa. We empower our families through cooperatives because we found out that uh, we work hands in hands with the government uh, programs so in order to help those poor families we need to, uh, to initiate the cooperative, to bring them into cooperative so that they can work together. So we have a farming and saving cooperative, and we have also sowing cooperative. So in those cooperatives, we make sure that we empower them. We have a program of capacity building. We train them how to manage the cooperatives, how to work together, how to change their mindset of not staying idle, not working, we tell them that they have to work hard in order to get food on the table. So after 2005, uh, visiting Rwanda for two weeks and seeing the needs, we went back to Canada and um, again, because we're Rwandans, we were blessed with people we knew in Rwanda, which includes our brother Jules Higiro, um, he has a heart of gold. He loves people. He understands the caring for another person. So again, Josephine mentioned that the people were helping children in the Eglise Vivant that we visited. One of them was Jules Higuero, Serge, a friend of his, and few friends, they got together. So when we went back and we said, let's just join hands and start our organization, helping our children to be independent adults. So I think, uh, I don't think it was uh, just by chance. Having people you trust in, in Rwanda, locally, who are running the work, they're on the ground, is one of the, 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 the most 
uh, 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 blessings that we we count as a, a, a as a blessing to be honest because working as an international you're not there you're not on the ground you don't know we have been in Canada for for many years we don't understand purely what the community people need so having somebody like uh, Joy Giro who said you know what I love my people I want to live my life and having a purpose serving my people so we really had the same vision the same purpose so that's such a blessing he's the one with a team of a uh, uh, beautiful people in Rwanda, they really were the foundation of our organization. Challenges, of course, you know, it, we cannot avoid challenges, it happens, but having people we trust, transparency, uh, passionate, we have the same culture, it really that helped our organization to thrive and to do great. So again, uh, looking at 2005, take doing a feeding program of three times a week to 2022 where our children now if you look at the ones in 2006 the some of them graduated from university some of them are in high school doing well and we just see this transformation this change through the labor of our work between Canada and Rwanda beautiful partnership people who are committed people who are not looking for themselves but looking for others and their future. The vision of Shelter Them is uh, a vision that I want to see a hundred years from now when I'm gone to heaven where somebody will take over and not be confused what to do and the vision is to help children so they can be independent adults and move on with a good job to support their family, their community and their country. There's something I really have on my heart is um, the day that I sat down and, and, and I prepared myself to speak to the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. I knew he was coming and of course we love him. I mean, look at the transformation of this country. I left in 97 and I remember, no offense to this country, I said, mom, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back. I don't care for for all these African us people, we're embarrassing. What is wrong with all of us? We just kill each other, we have no vision, we are stuck in our very poor minds. Goodbye, see you later. I'm gonna look from my left somewhere else. I'm not coming back, but I love you. You come to visit me. And mom is like, I don't blame you. I was like surprised, but she was like, I don't know what to say to you, but yeah, I understand. But that was me then. But every year, I see people going to Rwanda, people visiting, posting pictures. I see people singing. I see like 60-year-old ladies and men going to school with no teeth, but they had a vision. They want to become someone. I'm like, wait a minute. These people actually have a vision. They want to become someone. So I was like, wait a minute. Ah, this country sounds pretty good. Like, I want to go back. That's how most of people from outside Rwanda they're coming in here to invest. We're selling our houses, our cars, we're moving to Rwanda. It's the cleanest country in Africa. The cleanest, I don't know what's the list in the world. I am proud to be who I am. We no longer go like, wait a minute, Hotel Rwanda, who are you? Are you from Rwanda? Oh, do you know Hotel Rwanda? I'm like, that's not my name. My name is Ibukuru. So again, the vision is that to be proud of who we are. So when he came, I'm like, He's not only there to help Rwandans, he's coming to visit us, the outside diaspora people. I'm like, I'm talking to this wonderful man. And I said, Mr. President, I'm trying to help Rwandans like us. So I have a contribution to my home. But I have been asking, we have been asking for a land to help our people because we keep renting homes and kick us out and knocking at the door, rent is due, the rent is increased. And then I'm like, can you give us a land so we don't have to raise money from these Muzungus to um, buy a land so we can help our Rwandans, maybe we can ask for money for education. That makes sense. He goes, um, well, that's easy. That's the word I remember. Well, that's easy. Is it easy? Yes, we're standing on a beautiful green land in Gateco where I just witnessed amazing dance from a three to six year old kids. We have 98 of them. I mean, that's a lot of kids. Who gave mom and dad a break to go work so they're safe. They clean their hands, they eat, they dance, they get education and play. 
So this land is absolutely blessed. How did it start? A word. President Kagame, we love you, but can you give me a land? He's like, that's easy. He is a man of word and action, and we need to learn from him. So we're putting action here. It's visible that we build homes. My sister and I in Canada walked 70 kilometers to raise money for one home. Mama Olivia moved in because, I mean, whatever they call that, you know, my legs are getting stronger. I just walked because I love it, raised money to build one house on the land that you know, our president Kagame and the government gave us. Easy peasy. Like honestly, life is not complicated. When you have people who believe in you, who have a country with people with a vision, who want to hold hands and, and collaborate and work together. Even you guys, media people, we just told you about what we're doing and you're here. You drove like two hours, but you're here to support the work we're doing. So we want more people to believe in our dreams, in our vision. It is for us. We work in an honest way. We work, we're credible people. And we're just here to help one another. So we want everyone to join hands in how, however you can. If you have money and you say, well, I have money, I can donate, you can do that. We can build classes for our, our grade one uh, here in Gateco. If you don't have money, you can pray. Say, well, I do pray. We need your prayer. If you have expertise, that's correct, you are... Uh, expertise in marketing we need a people for marketing we need teachers we need media people we need everyone construction workers we need everyone I think every human every person you have something that you're good at so what are you good at share with your neighbor share with the Rwandans the world so to be that good citizen that good person who shares something beyond, beyond yourself and your family. Shelter Dem Bataru Rwanda is located in Bujesera district on a land acquired through a presidential pledge. It provides shelter, education and care for orphans, children with disability and vulnerable children in general. It was founded in 2006 by twin sisters Joseline and Josephine Hidiro.